All right. Thank you all so much for running through those questions. And thank you, Courtney, for facilitating uh, that portion of the panel. Uh, what we want to do is want to kind of like redirect on the now. And unfortunately, these aren't the normal times that we're used to. Uh, the world's going through a pandemic. And that's kind of affecting the job market in ways that we were not ready for. And it's heading in directions that we're kind of unsure about. And so I'd love if folks could kind of reflect on how these new changes have impacted their industry um, and give some kind of like a picture to our students who might be interested in similar careers or similar pathways. Sure, so this is Amelia and I can speak to that a little bit. Um, I think we're all somewhat limited in the sense that, um, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic is changing day to day and all anybody can truly do is make predictions um, on a lot of these things, whether it's the course of the pandemic or the economic implications. But um, from what I've seen in my industry of energy efficiency, um, our particular company is actually doing okay um, in because we we have some on-site work that's been pulled back uh, for the time being, but we have enough other consulting um, to keep us busy. Um, but I was actually just reading today some some newsletters uh, that I subscribe to, um, speaking about uh, you know some difficulties for the industry overall, particularly because so much of it is um, is is focused on um, on-site person-to-person work. You know, going into someone's home to do a weatherization, going into a business to do some sort of assessment. And so, with all those things being canceled, it really hurts a lot of businesses that are very dependent on any kind of face-to-face -face work um, and then sadly um, there's certainly in a in an emergency situation and in the aftermath um, there can be sometimes a pulling back from things like energy efficiency which depending on um, you know the the politics or some of those things uh, you know might be seen as more extraneous rather than something that's uh, more on the essential side so that is always kind of a, a, a factor at play um, but it kind of remains to be seen whether we'll see, um, I think we'll definitely see a temporary downturn in energy efficiency, but perhaps moving forward, you know, over a period of maybe a few years and then some, um, we might see a resurgence of some, some of that um, as we kind of as a nation and as a world kind of reassess some of our priorities and look to doing more with infrastructure, more with, um, you know, uh, uh, what's the word, um, preventative maintenance and planning um, to be able to address, uh, you know, potential issues that could impact us. So that's that's my vantage point um, uh, in my industry at this point, subject to change. Thanks, Amelia. It seems to be subject to change on a daily basis, no matter what industry you're in, given the elements that surround us currently. Um, but needless to say, you know, in respect to how the pandemics impacted us at Bay State Financial, I mean, the obvious answer of is market volatility. But we're one of the oldest and largest financial planning firms in the in the country, and the key word in that sentence is planning. So, whereas I used to, I started out my career with a wealth management firm, and and then I was a fairly successful executive for an insurance company. I mean, we're not really looking at just wealth management or insurance. We're really looking at uh, a holistic plan. So it hasn't impacted us to the same degree that perhaps others in our industry are more focused on particular areas because most of our clients do have a plan in place and and they're conditioned to, to weather this type of storm. Um, needless to say, you know, that's not to, not to suggest it doesn't have any impact because that would be disingenuous, right? It, it certainly has an impact on, in particular, I think some of our newer hires, right? We, we hire folks from, from all walks of life. Madeline, you had your MBA from the sustainability program. I've hired two individuals in the past 18 months who got their degree from that same program um, and, you know, who have a, a high interest in SRI and impact mm -hmm. investing. Right. Um, it, it's it's more difficult for some of our newer hires to network. Right. We, we talk about networking and well, our more experienced advisors are easily able to transition to Zoom or Teams or communicate via the telephone because they have that established clientele. It's been a little more challenging, a lot more challenging, I should say, for some of our newer hires who are looking to build a book of business and who aren't 
immediately positioned with a team. Uh, fortunately, another aspect of organizations, we have relied heavily on teaming and collaboration, which does help a lot of our newer people. That being said, I think it's a great time for people when we do get on the other end of this, and eventually we will, um, it's a great time to enter in to industry and, and in certain fields in particular, because there's going to be a lot of opportunity out there. And so it, it's been challenging in the sense that, look, the markets are volatile, people are scared, right? And, and we're managing uh, people's emotions every bit as much as we are their money on a daily basis. So, so that, that's, that's the challenge there. Um, I, I know Andrea well, she's one of my good friends. I know she oh, works yeah. with you, Brad, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, my favorite quote that I've seen about uh, this, the pandemic and uh, business is don't touch your face and don't touch your accounts. Um, words to live by right now. So. Um, you know, so at the Center for Women and Enterprise, so um, for some background, I just started with the Center for Women and Enterprise uh, last week. And prior to that, I was working for a startup for startups. Uh, we were an organization working on increasing entrepreneurship for um, the state of Vermont. And we had made the decision in January that we were going to close our business at the end of March, uh, which seemed like a good decision at the time. We would have moved that up had we had crystal balls. Um, so I was looking for work at the time that the pandemic was hitting, but um, had been doing a bunch of networking and uh, the Center for Women Enterprise, uh, their bread and butter is doing business consulting um, and helping female and all entrepreneurs, specifically small and micro um, business. And so they're really busy right now because businesses are struggling and this is really hard, especially for some small businesses that don't have um, don't have that many cash reserves. Um, so we're super, super busy right now, um, just trying to get people through some of the federal and state programs that have been set up to help them um, and make some tough decisions for their business um, because you know, business mentoring and business planning is all about uh, making educated guesses about the future, and that's pretty hard to do right now. Um, so for us, it means we're really busy, but it means it's a lot of hard conversations. Wow. Well, I'm a little different, I guess. Uh, I Not much has changed for me be, for a few reasons. Uh, my office is in my house, so my commute is in the summer it's flip-flops you know it, it's not uh it, it i don't have to be in contact i uh i have clients in 26 states so they know that the telephone is the easiest way or emails and some texts these days uh i think the pandemic uh first of all i don't think it's going to be over anytime soon uh sorry april 12th is not the season's the fifth day for a virus. Um, whereas I've been very lucky, uh, the other thing that's amazing about my business is it's always interesting. Every day there's something else that's happening somewhere. Uh, so it's sort of, in this case, adversity breeds opportunity is a way to look at it. But because I manage my clients' expectations, uh, lately, I've been having kind of a barbell situation where I have a couple that are calling and saying, I think the sky is falling, and I have to comfort them and explain to them the sky is not falling. And then I have the other ones that are uh, drooling on themselves, wanting to buy stuff. They <laughs> can't so I need to uh, uh, keep them all on a ne more even keel and have their objectives always in mind. So that's very exciting to me. It's very interesting. And since uh, I don't have any clients, two clients are not alike. Not everybody has a Volvo station wagon and 2.3 children and a golden retriever. So I, I have to deal with a lot of different things. Um, I will say relative to the pandemic part, uh, November 3rd is really important. Uh, that was that's the end of my political commentary. Um, I think uh, they they've been applying letters to the recovery and stuff, uh, a V shaped recovery, a U shaped W. I don't know is the official answer. Uh, we just try to keep things where they need to be. 
relative to and and Brad brought up an interesting point. Someone that's just starting in this business right now, I could argue that it's a fabulous opportunity for them, but they're going to suck wind and starve for a while. Yeah. And if they can get through that part, they can be very successful. If if they don't get distraught and bummed out by yeah. the way life seems to be going, yeah. um, I I think perseverance. And I'm I have a few clients that are suffering significantly. Uh, I have some people that own a restaurant in town, and all they can do is to go. They're making margarita mixes to go. It's like they're going to have a hard time earning a living doing that. So there's a lot of a lot of problems around there. And part of my job, and this is another fun part, is to find some solutions that are help them financially. So that's the end of my monologue on the pandemic.